Hey guys, Mike here. Um, I've had a couple of questions come in over the past week or so. People running into issues where they want to follow security best practice and have their printers on a separate VLAN, but still be able to air print and do things like that. So, um, printers, as you guys know, I mean, they broadcast it, they're there, so that, you know, devices that are on the network can discover them. And they use Bonjour or multicast technologies, anything like that to really be kind of promiscuous and say, hey, I'm here, print with me. And a lot of security practitioners understand security best practice and that when I say security best practice, you know, that means, you know, the segmentation of your network so that if a device gets compromised in VLAN XYZ, it doesn't jump over VLAN ABC because you have security policy between them, etc. But they don't necessarily understand the networking angle of things on how to make it security best practice, but accessible for you know simple things like being able to print. Obviously, one of the mainstays of buying a printer these days is being able to print from your iPad, your iPhone, your Samsung device, etc. So you still want to have security best practice but you still want the usability and that kind of goes back to the whole um, security um, triad if you will you know you have confidentiality integrity and availability availability the operation of something is just as important sometimes more important than the confidentiality confidentiality or the integrity it's a business decision that depends on the organization so, if you're in an environment that you have printers on a separate VLAN and you're wanting to use that function, this video is going to go into some detail about um, how to handle it. So, this particular video is going to be on 6.2, and uh, what we have here is my, my lab unit, you know, rinky dink. It's a little 4 to Wi Fi 621E, it's running 6.2.0, so it's not even running 6.2.1 yet, but. The process is the same for both. So, <clears throat> this FortiGate has been pretty much blown away. The only thing it does is uh, assist me for like lab videos and things of that nature. So, what we're going to do is we're going to well, here. Let's let's make this represent what we would actually see in a brand new FortiGate, just for giggles. So when you log into your brand new FortiGate, obviously yours may not be brand new. I mean, you typically see something like this, right? You have your DMZ port, your WAN, your WAN, your WAN 1, your WAN 2, and then your internal switch, at least on a, a smaller unit, like a, a 60E or a 50E, etc. Um, you have everything in a hardware switch, and from there you, you build your network out. A lot of environments that... Um, have switches and things of that nature, they usually let the switch just do layer two. So VLAN tagging and that's it. All the routing's done by the firewall, which is actually preferred for us because we want the ability to do um, UTM between the interfaces, right? So we have internal, I'm just gonna leave it at you know quad zero because we're not really worried about this particular interface because it's gonna have VLANs off of it. Now this is going to just, we're going to call this data VLAN. And it'll be VLAN 10. And we'll call it 10.10.1.1 slash 24. And I think I accidentally made that a DMZ. Yeah. That's what happens when you get ahead of yourself. So we're creating, we'll call it data. We'll hang it off the internal VLAN 10. And we'll say 10.10.1.1. .1. It's a LAN subnet, etc. So let's pretend, for the sake of the video, that VLAN 10 is the VLAN where all of our devices currently live. All of our data devices. So all of our um, PCs. Uh, let's act as though our our work Wi-Fi or our data Wi-Fi 
uh, it shares the same VLAN tag, so those users are able to traverse the 1010 10.1 subnet as well. And we're in the process. We're a brand new organization. We don't have any printers. We don't care. We want to stand up our printers in their own little VLAN so that they're segmented off because printers are dangerous. They're the bad boys of IT. No IT folks like them. Even when they're programmed right, shenanigans occur, right? Paper jams. Oh, I can't scan your PC. You know, all that fun stuff. So we're going to stand them up in their own VLAN for safety's sake. So we'll go create interface. We're going to create a new VLAN specifically for printers. We can call this VLAN 666 because printers are the devil. We'll call it printers. We'll call it 10.6.6. .6. That one slash 24. There we go. Yeah. So we have our two VLANs. Our data guys are able to go out. Our printers are able to go out. And for the sake of simplicity, I'm going to do it like this. Data to printer. Ignore the fact that there's no internet policy in here. This is strictly data talk on the printers, right guys? So data, the printers, and for the sake of the video we'll just use all because I don't have address objects created for those guys. No, no, we're not going to do any inspection, but you can. That's why we have it all terminated here. So our data network can talk to our printers. We're good there. And then, for the sake of the video, no, multicast. So, this policy allows the printers for computers to initiate communication with the printers. Um, if you want to enable the printers to be able to scan over, etc., and come back your way, you obviously have to allow that traffic in. Um, considering that we consider printers uh, an Internet of Things device or an embedded device that's capable of you know causing havoc on your network if it were to become compromised we would probably do UTM coming back and forth etc so so we have our data in our printer policy that means that the computers can reach out to the printer by IP so if the printer IP is 10.6.6.20, then anything on the data network can manually add that printer by IP. But it can't do automatic discovery. It can't do um, air talk or anything like that because all the broadcasts from the computers going out, which they send out multicast communications to see what's out there as well, they, you know, they can't communicate. That traffic does not traverse. So let's enable the policy that makes it to where these things can talk two way. And all I did here was clone the reverse. Makes things really simple and quick for us. So what you would do is you'd come down to multicast policy. Multicast policy is treated in the exact same way as a firewall policy. The only difference is it's specific to multicast traffic. So you would create new and you would say data actually yeah data to printers all to all enable this policy if you have a Ford analyzer or something like that I'd probably log the allowed traffic just to make sure that you have the visibility necessary right and you can actually choose your protocol here you want ping, you know, TCP, certain ports, OSPF, etc. We're going to leave it at any for now. So we'll click OK. Now we have our policy that allows basically any source address to any destination address data to printers. If your computer is the one sending the broadcast, this will work. This will enable it to multicast out and do things like that. If the printers are the only thing doing multicast out. You need to reverse, but it is what it is. And of course, you need a policy set to allow it. 
So what you have here is you have policy where you're able to apply security profiles. So you have the visibility you want. Your printers are on a separate network, so even if it's not even for security purposes, it's just for um, scalability and design and having a defined architecture that makes it easy to rinse and repeat with new printer deployments, etc. You have that laid out. And thanks to our multicast policy, you're able to actually use all the features that um, that those wonderful users of you yours you know want or need. They need it. They need it because users are inherently stupid. And they need everything, right? Regardless of security. So that's a pretty much in a nutshell how to make it to where your printers and your computers can jive well with AirTalk, things like that. It's usually the people that complain are people that want to print from their from their phone or their. Uh, their iPad, which some would say they shouldn't have their personal devices on the network anyways. If it's a business laptop or whatever, or a business iPad, okay, that makes sense. Um, I do have one warning for folks that are enabling multicast policy. Be careful with your source and destination interfaces. If you have a group of FortiGates that are all IPsec connected and you're really loose with your phase two so that you know you can send all traffic over the IPsec tunnel so you can randomly spin up new v, uh, VLANs at each location and not have to worry about anything except adding a route. If you have a multicast policy that says any interface to any interface all, all allow, that means you're going to send multicast, broadcast, all that jazz, not only from one VLAN to all the local VLANs on that FortiGate, but from that VLAN to all other VLANs on all the other FortiGates. You know, depending on policy, but most people, from what I've seen, they'll stand up a tunnel with quad zero for source and destination locations in the phase two, and then their policy is all, all, allow all, because they only care about it working, right? I'm telling you right now, you get a couple of FortiGates in a group hanging out, just sending broadcasts like that to each other, you're going to have a storm. And it's not going to be a pretty little, you know, oh, look, it's raining but sun shining outside storm. It's going to be my, my FortiGates are down, and as soon as they come back up, they crap out again. So be careful with that. Make sure that you're specific with where you want your multicast traffic to flow. There is a reason it is turned off by default from the factory. So hopefully this video provides a little bit of insight. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the comments below. Um, I, have a couple, I have a couple more whiteboard sessions that are planned out. Uh, some of the topics that we may see are, um, you know, an HA FortiGate with redundant ISP. I know we did something regarding uh, the proper cabling of switch environment, etc. So, but yeah, hit up the comments below, like, subscribe, do your thing. Share with your friends. We're growing pretty rapidly. We're almost at 3,000 subscribers. Um, so if you need anything, ask away. Be more than happy to help. Thank you guys, and hope you have a wonderful weekend.